Before we get started on this episode, I just want to let you know that there is a brand new issue of the now Eisner nominated panel by panel magazine out right now. You can find it at gumroad.com slash panel x panel and get your copy there. Hershey is a master of visual clarity, which itself is pretty evident from almost any page of Tintin. For this episode, I'm going to look at a few examples from the Black Island story from the Adventures of Tintin and hopefully explore a little bit about what made his approach so special and what it was he was actually doing in each page to craft his approach and have such, such clarity on the page. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to have a look at the first page, because I think it does set the tone and the understanding of Hergé's approach pretty well. Before we get into any panel content, let's take a look at the page layout, because it is the same through the whole story. Each page has a four-tier system running through it. In this example, the second tier is a little thinner than the rest, to allow the third tier to be a little bit higher, and that is something Hergé will do. He isn't scared of changing or tweaking the heights when necessary, but overall, the fundamental layout is the same. Most of the tiers will have three to four panels on average, three panels per tier, four tiers. I think this is actually a pretty good way to look at Hergé's approach generally, and what I'll be trying to get to the bottom of, which is this straightforwardness of the whole thing. His whole style is very, very upfront, and there are like a set of rules that most pages and panels kind of adhere to, and the first major one is page construction. So what I mean by that is the four-tier system. The pages are constructed exactly the same, and so when you turn the page and get to a new scene, a new location, a new story point, the actual layout of it is, apart from one or two very, very minor exceptions, the same. And that leads into this idea of a frictionless bit of storytelling, and that is a phrase I'm going to bring up quite a few times in this episode. When you get into the panel content, the next thing that seems apparent is the framing angle, which is often showing full bodies of characters in each case, unless otherwise squeezed for space or text, as in the second row with a thinner tier here on this page. Otherwise, almost every panel on every other tier contains full body shots of characters, and if we look at other pages throughout Black Island, you'll see the same thing. To me, this creates an idea that as a reader, we're almost always a similar distance away from the events happening on the page. Like we, as the kind of camera or point of view, is in a static position. Unlike, say, modern superhero books, which is something that I did write recently on the Patreon page in regards to Stuart Monan's work, where he constantly shifts angles and points of view. Here we've got something that's almost like the comic equivalent of a static tripoded camera angle, if it were a film, and it creates an almost observational approach to the whole thing. In a sense, this means it might become less dynamic on the face of it, but I do think that there is an element of design in that, because again, it makes the whole experience have less friction. Each image isn't a case of having to like re-understand it from this brand new angle, this brand new point of view, but what you've got instead is clarity, panel to panel, it's really exceptional. There are some downsides to this in that for the most part, Hergé will not rely on a close-up, and that can leave you with less options, but I will talk in a sec about how he gets around that. But back to the main point here, which is clarity. This is so, so easy to read, which is the next point. Hergé likes to keep panels pretty similar across an action. Here's an example of a fireman, and you can see on the second tier, three panels are almost exactly the same, right? There's a slight variation to show the actions, but for the most part, it's a similar image. Even when it changes, there are specific anchors in the panel to keep it all rooted. So, for example, on the top tier, you've got two panels, and the switch from one to two is quite dramatic by Hergé's standards, but it is anchored by the character in green's position, and also by having the character in blue here on the second panel already be in the first panel. So while the actual angle changes, it's a little bit maybe more dynamic than what we would expect, it's not bombarding the reader with tons and tons of new information. It's just the necessary information. Which leads nicely again into the fourth point, which is clarity of action in panels. This is a page that at first glance looks like it's got a lot going on, and compared to a lot of the rest of these pages, it does have a lot of individual actions. But the page itself is incredibly clear and straightforward. And we can also apply all the previous points to this page, because what we've got here is four tiers, around three to four panels per tier, most of the panels contain full body shots of the characters from a fairly straightforward angle. Obviously, there's a bit of up and down, but for the most part, it's not kind of canted or too crazy. So what this does is it just basically keeps the emphasis on what's actually happening in the panel, and it relies on the strength of the characters' reactions and responses to sell the aim and emotion of the panel. And Hergé does this in two ways, but both are basically extensions of each other, and it's through simple balloons and exaggerated responses and acting. The characters act in these big sort of dramatic theatre-esque ways. So like the fourth panel, you've got all these stars and motion lines, and Tintin's body language is kind of exaggerated in his fall, and the in-panel rendering really emphasises that. 
And this panel also has a classic Hergé big question mark balloon, adding to the surprise and shock for the character. And so we as a reader, we fully understand that response. Super simple, super clear. We may not feel like it's happening to us specifically, but we understand it happening to Tintin very clearly. And in each of these panels is one action, one thing to notice per panel. Again, this isn't 100% perfect across the comic, as Hergé will occasionally add things into the background or the foreground of a panel, but for the most part, it feels like he's aiming to have just this one thing to look at. Most of these panels can be summed up in a few words, really. So, you know, Snowy and Tintin asleep, hand pulls a brake, Tintin falls off the chair, looks out the window, runs out of the carriage, looks down the hallway, chases a mysterious figure. I'm giving you very simplified versions of this, but there isn't really much else going on, and so the panel content is pretty simple. And to bring it all back to that main overriding point, there is almost no friction on this page for a reader. So you essentially just breeze right through these panels. Combined with the similar panel setup, you get a very particular rhythm to each tier and each page, and it bounces you along very, very easily. And I would argue that anyone really, regardless of comic understanding or your comic reading experience or history, anyone could pick up a copy of Tintin and read it cover to cover with absolutely no issues. And it's because of that dedication to frictionless clarity. Take any page in this and you can see these trademarks of Hergé's approach. We stay at a similar distance, watching one full body action per panel and understanding character responses and actions through exaggerated actions and balloons. It's a very, very simple template, but the comic also needs to be designed from the ground up to work in this way, otherwise it ends up fighting against itself. And luckily Hergé knew exactly what he was doing, and because of that we got some wonderful, wonderful stories told in just equally wonderful ways. Thanks for watching. The episode was, as always, made possible by the patrons at patreon.com slash stritpanelnaked. For their support, they get brand new exclusive content every single week from me too. Check it out if you'd like to support the channel. You can get my comics magazine at panelxpanel.com and I'm on Twitter at HassanOE. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes and I'll see you next time.